Hi all, I have another very exciting attacking game to show you. This is Leela Chess 0445 against Hannibal. So this was a match against different engines from certain set positions. And so that's why we see a repeat of the Benoni here. So Hannibal playing black plays the Benoni. A particular flavor without Finn chattering the bishop, we actually have bishop e7. And now f4 castles, bishop e2, queen a5. Bishop d2, unpinning and stopping that knight takes e4 there. Queen c7, g4. So this very, very aggressive caveman style. Uh, it's very, very difficult to play against, it seems. Let's see. Knight fd7. Knight f3 covers against bishop h4 check. Rook e8. g5. Knight b6. And now simply f5. It looks very, very natural and smooth. White's play, just advancing the pawns up there. So ready and waiting to crash through at some point to the king. G6, H4. Now this is actually a dual purpose move. It doesn't just uh, like childish, childishly, uh, you know, advance the pawns more. It gives that H2 square for the knights now. And we see that after bishop F8, knight H2, a wonderful attacking maneuver. And it reminds me of a game of Plask I saw many years ago where he did with black he had the same kind of knight maneuver going into f6 uh, so bishop g7 knight g4 so very very dangerous already white has no problem with that e5 square it's sometimes a concession when you play for f5 but there's no big deal about the e5 square here black's pieces are so passive they can't exploit any of the weaknesses that white's uh, pawn moves have created so in one sense you might think well, wow, can you really do this without leaving exploitable weaknesses behind? But yeah, where's how? Where is the issue? F6, Bishop F8, and in fact, it's Black's king that starts to get uh, ripped to shreds here. The natural-looking H5 is played. Uh, Black's got no good moves here. Basically, Black played the awkward G takes H5. Clearly, this fragments the pawns, uh, making them more vulnerable in the future. But let's have a look. If if knights a6 hg it doesn't matter how black takes but let's look at both if black takes with the f pawn there's the f pawn mobility now for white let's have a look f7 and here bang knight b5 and all of a sudden there's bishop c3 so hitting the queen here this is a great position any bishop g7 there's f8 queening and we see that the pin bishop so that's totally devastating so this this is just to be absolutely devastating so this is just killing here it's just winning material at least uh and well basically it's a totally decisive advantage and if we look the other way at hg white just moves the king basically king g2 and uses the h file we get some beautiful lines like this with rook h8 check queen coming in knight h6 check this is absolutely devastating for example knight takes f7 queen h Eight check, check here, and that's forcing mate. So it's totally crushing if that pawn is is able to take on g6. So not too many choices. Knight e3. The knight's done. It's done the damage. It's fragmented the pawns. H4. Queen e1. White's just piling up now on the h file against basically an isolated pawn, an isolated h7 pawn. Queen h4. It's basically very very passive for black now and the pawn f7 pawn is hit and now g6 so threatening g7 check uh, absolute devastation there's no way black can afford g7 check so bishop h6 was played but now g takes f7 rook f8 king h1 so preparing even to use the g file now rook takes f7 very desperate move in the lost position uh, if black doesn't do anything well what can black do uh, if it's difficult to give black a move let's say knight f5 here bishop takes queen g4 forget about just just go for the king here fretting then queen g7 checkmate uh, so say knight takes then queen take uh, queen g7 checkmate and here i mean it's just totally desperate this is just totally desperate it's just crashing through so basically uh this is a lost position already bishop takes 
and here queen takes was played you might think well what about bishop takes here let's have a quick look basically bishop g6 with a vengeance doesn't matter about the d2 bishop here because can you guess f7 the f7 pawn is lethal now <laughs> look at all the black's pieces over here spectator pieces against the poor f7 pawn um yeah it's absolutely all over already so anyway queen takes h6 so white's just big material up and it's, it's fun how white opens up all the pieces now to the knight coming to e4 doesn't matter about the queens coming off it's totally of course lost for black now everything coordinating beautifully nice mass centralization of these three minor pieces it just needs the rooks to join the orchestra of attacking pieces now so the rook comes in check check and it was stopped here it's absolutely devastating clearly okay yeah so Hannibal totally wrecked with the same kind of crude you know pawn avalanche on the king side it shows it's it's just it seems to be an indefensible position by the evidence of just two games not too much evidence but it seems to be a very intuitive attacking way of playing the position without penalty for white uh, because black does seem cramped in that particular opening and you could argue well it's it's not a great opening and you're, and you're right it's not a solid opening it was uh you know an experiment but all the engines got to play white and black actually against each other so it was a fair kind of tournament setup i'll give you a link to who set up this uh the, this engine versus engine tournament so you can get more details about it okay hope you enjoyed this one comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much